How you doing? I'm Matt with 731woolworks.com. Today, let me show you how to build this awesome American flag wall art. This is perfect for a teacher's gift. It has the Pledge of Allegiance inscribed on it. My wife done the lettering. If you've got somebody or for yourself, if you're good with a pen, you can make good letters. I'm not, so I had my wife do it. She done an amazing job writing the Pledge of Allegiance on there. This would be great for a classroom. You hang that thing up and the kids can read it off first. But what a great gift for a teacher to hang in their classroom has the Pledge of Allegiance on there, the American flag. I think it'd be an awesome gift. Let me show you how to make this. It's not that difficult. It just takes a little bit of time. Of course, somebody with a little bit of artistic ability to write those letters on there. Let's get started. Try not to hold me down. Feel alive when I'm in this town. Look at those beautiful stars. I want to drive a faster car. Hey, don't forget to check the description down below. I put show notes down there as well as useful links to a lot of these supplies and tools that I'm using. So if you see something you like and you might want to try it for yourself, check that description first. That's where you're going to find the links to these products. Hey, if you're new here, please consider subscribing, hitting that thumbs up button. That helps me a lot. If you'll share this on your social media, that's great too. We appreciate that virtual fist bump from me if you do that. So this is made out of spruce. It's easy to work with. This is the on, this is a plywood on the Union. We built this out of plywood. The rest of it, I've cut inch and a half strips out of spruce, stained them, distressed them, and then put that clear coat on there. I'll show you how I did all that. And then my wife, of course, put those letters on there. This makes an excellent gift for teachers, police officers, firemen, the military. If you don't want to build this, we sell these on our website. You can check us out at 731bootworks.com and click on the shop button. Or if you're on mobile, you can hit the little hamburger menu and then hit the shop button. We also have an Etsy store. If you'd rather go through Etsy, just search 731 Woodworks. So let me show you how I build this and then you can make one for yourself. So the first thing I do in building my flags is I cut these inch and a half strips out. These are one by sixes, uh, one by six, um, spruce it's a good soft wood it's easy to cut it's easy to work with this is these are about seven dollars or eight dollars about eight dollars a board for a 10 foot long board at my local uh, lumber shop the prices fluctuate obviously a little bit but between seven and eight dollars what i like to do first is i cut them at 37 inches long and that's what these are you'll need two three two and a half so you'll need six of these at 37 inches and then you'll need seven of them at 22 and a half inches long. What I like to do first is I'll take a one by six and I'll cut one edge off. And if you've ever seen my jointing videos, how I joint with a table saw, I'll put a card above that video. I just use a, um, a straight edge like this level, put it against one edge and then rip off the other edge. Just make sure the level moves with the uh, stock where it won't work right. And then once that's done, I just move my fence into an inch and a half and I rip inch and a half strips off. So that's what I'm doing now. Skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna be myself. I'm gonna be someone else. I'm gonna be myself. I'm gonna be someone else. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. Try not to hold me down. Feel alive when I'm in this town. All right, I got my 13 stripes cut out. And now to add that detail I was talking about, what I'm gonna do is take my uh, cordless router. Right, if you have a quarter router, it doesn't matter. This is a quarter inch roundover bit. You can use a chamfer bit. Uh, this is just a, a way to add detail. And what I'm gonna do is go around all the edges of all 13 stripes on one side. The back side of the flag, I'm gonna leave flat. But the front side, all four edges of the front of that uh, stripe will be rounded over. What you're gonna have is a flat side, which will be your back. And then the top side is gonna be a little bit rounded over. Quarter inch, you, if you use a three eighths, it's gonna give it more detail. But I use a quarter inch. You'll see the roughness on the edges here. I'm okay with that because I'm fixing to take my orbital sander with 120 grit and we're gonna clean all this up. And it'll be nice and smooth all the way around. And then we'll be ready to stain these. What I forgot to mention was, I always lay this out before I stain it. So I'm gonna, what I do is I'll lay it out. You can see that uh, we got a basic shape of a flag. Of course, this is already stained. Usually it won't be from a previous flag. I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna flip these over and write on the bottom. And we're gonna start with red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red. 
That way we don't get anything mixed up. I just put a R or a W on the bottom of all of those going up. That way, when I get it over to my stain in the table, I won't get anything mixed up and have too many reds or too many whites. Just kind of a, a tip for you. So I'm gonna start with the red. It doesn't matter what you start with. I'm starting with the red. Shake it up real good. Make sure everything's nice and mixed well. I'll, I'll take a stir stick, stir that up good. I just got old t-shirts is what I use for my staining rags. I don't, uh, you can use whatever you want. I don't brush it on or use a foam roller or anything like that. I just take some small pieces of ra uh, rag or a uh, t-shirt, cut those up, and then we'll, we'll use that to stain with. I usually use one to put the stain on with, and then the other I'll use after it dries four or five minutes to take and wipe any excess off. Uh, this seems to work well for me until I run out of old t-shirts. And the great thing about this water-based stain is it dries really fast, so maybe an hour or so dry time before you can put another coat on. Uh, Oil-based stain, uh, you're looking at eight to 12 hours at least uh, dry time. So I, that's one good thing about it. This uh, water-based stain is not as a deep of a color. Uh, I don't even know if you can get red, white, and blue in oil. I'm sure you can, but uh, just for staining purposes, I, I like to stain it because you can still see the wood grain show through. This one is stained. That one is painted. Uh, if you look at any, if you look at my video of the of the red, white, and blue, or the blue line flag. You see that you know you don't see any wood grain it's just a flat looks it's painted now, this one shows the wood grain through so and then this one we're actually going to distress it so you'll actually see more wood grain it's going to look really beautiful Now it's time to put our flag together. You got a couple of options at this point. If you wanted to distress this flag like this in separate pieces, you could do that with the orbital sander. What I'm using is my 60 inch uh, Harbor Freight um, F clamps. They are uh, very inexpensive and they work very well for this application. So what I want to do is I want to take and put a little bit of wood glue on each, each uh, joint and then get the flag um, just a little bit of pressure on these uh, clamps to hold everything tight until I can flip it over and put those vertical strips on and I'm going to brad nail those on. Uh, this will be distressed. You see how that come out? You see how the whites come out? <laughs> She's fussing. So that's what's fixing to happen. We'll fix to put these in clamps and get everything going our way.
So that's a flag. I mean, it's beautiful. But you want to put a clear coat on that, and I'm going to do that. I may distress this one. I've been talking about distressing. I think I will. Uh, I think distressing it makes it look a little more aged, and it gives it a little more uh, definition and a little more character. And so, but if you wanted to leave it plain like this, certainly do that. It's just uh, red and white and blue, like a good old American flag, old glory. But if you wanted to do that, you just put a clear coat on there now and leave it. Uh, I would go with a satin clear coat, but you can go with whatever you want. I like to use uh, general finishes, and uh, but I have used some water locks, oil and polyurethane mix. I've used uh, Armor Seal by general finishes, uh, oil and polyurethane. I'm not sure what, what kind of uh, clear coat I'm gonna go with yet. I'm making my mind up when I get there. And then, uh, but I'm gonna distress this, I think. What do you think, maybe, no, I don't know. So just uh, if I distress it, I'll show it on the video. It's 120 grit, uh, sandpaper over it and just kind of knock some of the color out of it. Maybe distress some of those stars. Just give it a little more rustic look. So I've distressed this flag with 120 grit sandpaper and then I took a 220 and just went back over it lightly just to so smooth everything down. It's really nice and smooth. So now I've got it distressed, but it doesn't really look old. It's kind of, it just looks like sanded wood. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this Johnson's Paste Wax. There's a link to this stuff in the description below. It's like a furniture wax type stuff. Uh, what I do is I'll scoop. This stuff is, it's a wax. I mean, it's, it's in a wax consistency. So I put some in a in a some type of container. This is just a cardboard box. And then I'm gonna take Valspar antiquing wax. This is a black wax, a dark satin acrylic wax. This stuff is, uh, it, I use it to tint the Johnson's paste wax. Mix up what I got. You can see it's gonna be a dark, dark color. And this stuff goes, a little bit goes a long way with this stuff. So. You can, you, can, you can easily over tint something if you're not careful. What The purpose of this for me is I'm gonna take these two waxes and mix them together. The antiquing wax will actually dry uh, hard for you, whereas the, the Johnson's paste wax will leave a film on there. So what I like to do is, is mix these together for two reasons. One, the tint, and for two, it's, it's a kind of a hardening agent. And I just mix them both together and you get the color you want. I, I got a pretty dark color going on, and that's what I want because I want it to actually stain a little bit of what I've already sanded and kind of give it a dark, kind of a dirty look is what I'm looking for. And then once I, I'm gonna apply this pretty liberally, and then I'm gonna wipe it down with a clean cloth and get it all back off of there, or, or as much as off as I can. Because I don't want to leave that setting very long. It's gonna, it'll really uh, stain your, your piece if you're not careful. And, uh, but I do want it to be stained a little bit. I mean, a little bit goes a long way, like I said. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm gonna put some gloves on because this stuff gets on your skin. It'll really stain you up. All right, so if you know me, you know I'm gonna be using general finishes for my clear coat. I highly recommend this stuff. This is a water-based finish. You can use a, a oil-based, so they also make an oil-based finish called Armor Seal. This stuff is excellent. It's, this is a satin finish. And I want a satin finish on my flag. Uh, if you wanna check this stuff out, there's a link in the description to it. This is general finish, high-performance top coat, a water-based top coat, satin, 
Uh, like I said, this is uh, it's extremely nice. I like it because it goes on extremely easy. I use a high quality brush. I say high quality, we're about eight or $10 per brush. And you can rinse it out and just reuse it. I've had this thing for a couple of months. It works really well. I'm just gonna brush on a, a liberal coat. And I don't have, to, with this stuff, with this water base, I don't have to worry about having brush strokes and all that stuff in my finish. It comes out nice and smooth. And all I do is I'll brush it on, let it dry about an hour, and then come back with the 300 grit sandpaper on a sanding block and just lightly sand between coats. And I put three coats on. Of course, on the last coat, you're not going to sand it. So it'll come out with a nice set and finish. It'll look really nice on this flag. So that's what I'm going to do now. Be sure to stir this because the uh, it, it'll settle to the bottom. And if you don't stir it, you'll wind it with a, a more glossy finish. So make sure you just stir it real nice. Lay my troubles to rest. Blow the smoke through my cigarette. City lights looking fine. And I know this is my time now. I'm gonna be myself. Or I could be someone else. No one's stopping me now. I'm gonna skip my drive a faster car i'm gonna be myself i'm gonna be someone else i'm gonna be myself i'm gonna be someone else i'm gonna skip my breaks i'm gonna make mistakes i'm gonna skip my breaks i'm gonna make mistakes i'm gonna be myself i'm gonna be someone else i'm gonna be myself i'm gonna be someone else i'm gonna skip my breaks